prepare to be captivated by the business story of the week, hosted by me, Shaheen Shan. Join us on a journey through the twists and turns of entrepreneurial triumphs and setbacks. Immerse yourself in the narrative and witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. This is Business Story of the Week. All right, welcome to another episode of Business Story of the Week. Today we've got Dylan Vanis. This guy is one of the brightest, most interesting young entrepreneurs we've had on the show so far. Dylan Dylan is a two-time eight-figure founder and business speaker. He works with some of the world's largest personalities and brands. He's shared the stage with people like Gary V, Pat Bet David, Ed Milet, and all kinds of people. I'm always seeing videos and pictures of Dylan hanging out with the who's who of the world. And kind of guys, I don't know how he feels about me letting you guys know this, but he's behind the lot, a lot of the internet fame and digital success of a lot of these people. I'm not going to say who, but a lot of famous people, Dylan is responsible for making them internet famous. He's got hundreds of thousands of followers across social media. Uh, he's been a writer for major magazines like Entrepreneur and several others, uh, and he's been able to build relationships with some of the world's biggest influencers, uh, all while impacting people worldwide. Dylan, welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, glad to be here. That's a great intro. Yeah. It's going to carry so, you around with me everywhere I go. So one of the interesting things um, is that I always felt that people more than money want fame. Everybody wants to be famous. And living now in a place where everything around you is buzzing with, hey, be noticed, get your message out. What do you recommend to somebody who wants to gain a following? I know you're a pro, you're one of the top in the world at doing this. Somebody who wants to become internet famous but has no clue where to start. How can they do that? So what's really interesting is we've seen this this thing now where um, influencers are like are the current day c- celebrity. But the problem is is influencers don't have the credibility that old school celebrities have. So what we're seeing right now is uh, celebrities will, will hang out with influencers for the eyeballs because influencers have the attention, and influencers will hang with celebrities for the credibility. Right. So you put Snoop Dogg and I don't know, and Logan Paul in a room together. Right. And now all of a sudden it's like it's a credible room. You got Logan Paul's attention and Snoop Dogg, you know, he's been in the music industry for two or three decades. So uh, there is a lot of power in in capturing that attention. But most people don't even know where to start. And so a few years back, I saw this trend happening where people wanted to effectively purchase clout. And what I mean by cloud, it's like attention. It's like internet slang, right? For like followers and, and attention. So uh, people wanted to buy it. And so there's these people that are successful IRL in real life and they're, they, they have no nothing online. And so what I started doing was creating a suite of services uh, through my agency, Mindful Agency, where we actually will help people establish their brand and, and build it online and effectively allow them to purchase cloud. So wow. W- w- uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, that's that's amazing. So guys, let me uh, I am going to uh, do something here. So if you can see, this is Dylan's Instagram and you'll notice that he's got 140,000 followers. He's got pictures with the who's who of of celebrities with Dana White over here with Gary V. He's rocking and rolling. So we'll see here. And he's done an excellent job. So let's let's play one of Dylan's videos here and see. If I'm going to show you how small influencers are making $100,000 or more per year. Only had 5,000 followers. Now she's using a, a preview of a YouTube video. I'm going to share with you how you can actually go ahead and tap well, what, one thing that's really interesting is short form con- long form content is where the money's at. I've got a, a, a I've got friends of mine that get 20, 30,000 views uh, per video. They'll so like 100,000 views per month and they'll be making 5, 6,000 dollars 
uh, per month. So it was like good money, right? Not that not that crazy views on long form content. But short form content, I have one buddy, he's got 25 million views last month on his short form content. He made 1100 bucks off ad revenue from YouTube. So wow. the, the discrepancy there, short form views, short form content doesn't have, uh, doesn't really hold any monetary value. So everything, whenever you're looking at content, the reason that video is there is the whole idea is let's use short form content to drive eyeballs onto our long form content, into our podcast, into, you know, if you're a musician, into your music, like whatever it is, but it's to capture attention and move them somewhere more valuable. That's amazing. So for somebody who doesn't know how to do it, and obviously, you know, probably the best option would be to hire mindful agency or to get involved with your company agency box. And I'm sure you're going to tell us how to get a hold of you, but we're going to hold off till the end because I want people listening to what you say because I know that you are one of the top influence makers. I had a, a friend a while ago and he was very well known in a very specific niche industry, but nobody outside of there knew him. And his whole thing was, I'm not famous, but I'm famous with the famous. And while you are an uh, influencer in your own, own rank, uh, you are very well known in this industry and to all these major influencers and names. So how does a business that's getting going uh, leverage the power of what you're talking about, uh, you know, outside of just short form video, but what else can they do to get their brand uh, famous? So the way I look at uh, the way I look at authority online is kind of like a, a pyramid. Everything comes back to pyramids, uh, and uh, on the bottom we have authority, right? So the, the the thing is, is you need to establish what I call a baseline level of social proof in order for people to give a crap about you. If you got 173 followers and you're just posting photos of like you know a little stock photo here and there, no one's gonna give a crap. And so it, it's establishing that. Now when we're talking about social proof baseline level of social proof there's a couple elements one you need to get like 10,000 followers across on each platform so 10,000 on instagram 10,000 on facebook uh youtube's a little bit less but you could get away with like a thousand but you want to establish that um you can do that through posting content for a long period of time or you can do it through there's ways to to grow following and drive followers um uh that you can pay for then you want to go ahead and, and start building, establishing the, the, the narrative about you. So what is the internet saying? This is where you go get press articles written about you. You, you start filling up search engines with like the, the story that you want said. The cool thing about building a personal brand or building a brand as an organization is, is when you're starting out, you get to create the narrative. So you have two options. Either let Google and search engines just put whatever they, they think you are uh, on there or you just create the narrative and you say it in the media. So that's like the bottom. Next level up is you wanna start establishing your brand presence. So what's the mission, what are you doing? And, and then creating content around that. So typically people, faces are more sticky than, uh, than like brands and stuff. If you go look at Tesla versus Elon Musk on Twitter, you're gonna see that Elon Musk has like 140 million followers and Tesla has like 20 million. So obviously extreme example, but for in most cases, personalities are much more sticky. So you want to find a spokesperson internally within the organization to be the person that's going to be the face on camera. Once that's done, you establish the pinnacle, the top, which really the top is about tapping into other people's audiences. So getting on podcasts, getting on stages, getting in front of other people, doing joint ventures and collaborations, because it's going to take a long time for an organization or a person to build their own audience. But what's much better is if you can borrow and tap into someone else's audience and kind of use the years that they've been building their audience and kind of pick some people from that. Wow, that's amazing. So if people want to get a hold of you, can they hire you to do this for them? Yeah, 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 we, we, we do it. Um, so kind of our, our clientele is like, it's people who uh, are really wanting to take their their online brand seriously and they want to grow, they want to grow their brand. Um, and we typically work with like successful entrepreneurs who don't have much online presence that want to build it and establish it. And I do that through my company, Mindful Agency. And that's really what we specialize in is like building and establishing personalities and brands. 
Wow. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your story and how you arrived at Mindful Agency and Agency Box and what your entrepreneurial journey was that brought you there. Yeah, uh, I was in, uh, so my dad's a dentist, his dad was a dentist, and so naturally I was supposed to be a dentist. Uh, I dropped out of college in my, going into my fourth year of school. My dad didn't talk to me for six months because I'm destroying the family heritage. And, uh, and, oh. um, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's funny because now, now he brags about me, right? Because I did, I took the path that he was too scared to do. I, I chose my own path. And, um, you know, he looks at me as an inspiration. He actually told me, Dylan, when I'm making decisions, sometimes I'll think, hey, how would Dylan handle this? Because uh, literally he, he, he understands and believes in my, my thought process. But um, so, you know, I dropped into college. I, I kind of did like the whole entrepreneur thing. I did literally everything from selling pets, flying squirrels, like real life flying squirrels as pets to, uh, you know, I, I even mess with uh, Amazon FBA. I had, a, I still have a store on Amazon. So uh, I did the whole entrepreneur thing. And then I discovered, uh, I, I talked to one of my mentors, a guy named Brian Sidorsky up in Canada. He's, he's, uh, he was my first billionaire mentor. The guy's worth like 700 million, but I'll round up and just call him a billionaire. Close enough. Um, and, uh, and uh, he said, Dylan, the, the, the formula is simple. If you want to make more money, just add more value. Find an area in life where you can add insane amounts of value, and it's going to be limit. It's going to be like limitless income. So I was like, "What's the way I can do this?" Well, something people are always going to need is leads. People are always going to need more business for their business. So I started selling, effectively selling lead generation for, in the real estate space, and then then it became a marketing agency, and all of a sudden people were asking for X, Y, and Z. I'm like, "All right, I'll do it." And then, you know, one thing leads to another and, and, that, and the agency just scaled and scaled and scaled. I've got about 100 employees now and uh, we do pretty much every digital agency service. Um, and what led to the brand building thing was in this business, you kind of get invited to speak on stages, you get invited to go to these events, all this stuff. And everyone in the room wanted one thing. They wanted more authority and attention. And so I was like, hmm, I can do that. So that's when I started selling authority and attention packages. That's amazing. Yeah, again, goes back to my point. There is nothing more powerful than fame. And it's funny. I learned this in the film business back in the 90s. I produced a film a long time ago with, believe it or not, Vanilla Ice, uh, who back then hadn't made his comeback yet. And we were going to cast, uh, it was a spoof of the film The Matrix. I won't even mention it, but pe people can find it online. It was terrible. And I realized that as I had, I had financed this film and people were making more money than they had ever made in their lives uh, being a part of this thing. And there was an opportunity where we had an opportunity to sell this movie to um, a studio that was interested in taking it. It was right on the code of The Matrix coming out and it was very, you know, very successful, uh, The Matrix was, and they wanted something that was a spoof. And I realized that people were fighting over titles. And I thought to myself, why would they do this? Why would people be willing to blow a deal uh, where they would be getting money over a title? And people were fighting over, over roles in the film where you know some of the people who were in the production of the film wanted to be actors in the film and were competing with the actors. And I realized in that moment that there is no drug more powerful than fame. And that's where I think you are in the exact right business because if you can be a kingmaker and have the ability to make people famous, which I think you do and you've done repeatedly over the course of your career, how could you not uh, make money with that? So that's, that's incredible. Okay, how can people get a hold of you? How can people engage you? How can people get involved? Uh, with all that you're doing? Yeah, so I think if someone's trying to establish their brand, um, you know, Mindful Agency is, is the place to do it, mindfulagency.com. And then we can do, uh, uh, as, far as, as far as reaching out to me personally, everything kind of gets filtered before it hits me except for Instagram. So if someone's trying to, you know, they want to connect, whatever, game plan, like what it looks like to build their brand, uh, Dylan Van S, D-Y-L-A-N-V-A-N-A-S on Instagram is the best way to get in touch. Yeah, so reach out to him on Instagram or uh, check out uh, Mindful Agency. Also, I know you guys have an Instagram page for Mindful Agency. It's at Mindful Agency. 
and also Agency Box, which is pretty innovative. Dylan's built out a, a way where if you have an agency and there are some services that clients could use, some strategic uh, additions, but you don't want to offer that service. Dylan, tell them really briefly about Agency Box. Yeah, Agency Box started as like a solution. It's like running an agency is a lot of work. There's this idea called the growth fulfillment paradox where you're trying to grow the business. Any business has this. You grow in the business, you're trying to manage it. It's like it doesn't work. So what we do is we do the managing of the business side and let agency owners specifically be the CEO of their company, run the business, and we take care of like the fulfillment, the project management, the hard technical backend work. And uh, it's basically a revenue share. So we help agencies scale up and succeed. We Agencies go impact more businesses. The mission is the mission of Agency Box is the pandemic k killed so many businesses. It was absolutely terrible, and, and and it's not fair that the businesses that went out of business were the mom and pop shops that spent the last two or three decades serving local communities, employing dozens of people, helping people out, and then Amazon, these big tech companies, are the ones that came and crushed them. So our mission is we're allowing our community, our agency owners, our, our people to go out and serve these businesses that don't have the ability to get online and, and use this social, you know, social media and stuff to, to grow their business. And then in turn, you know, we, we do a revenue share. Again, remember, you want to make more money, you do what? You add more value. And that's what we're doing. I love that. All right, guys, check him out. Dylan Venice will include his links in the show notes. Dylan, thanks for being on. And you and me are going to have to do a larger episode where we dig more into what you're doing because I'm fascinated by learning about you. Thank you for being on, bud. Thanks for having me. All right, so here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.